Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Murder in the Dark by Margaret Atwood. So, this is a very odd book, and um, because these are all very short as well, I'm basically just going to read out a bunch of the stuff that I tabbed out for you. I'm going to start with the, the blurb, so... Dane reads... These short fictions and prose poems are beautifully bizarre. Bread can no longer be thought of as a wholesome, comforting loaf. The pretensions of the male chef are subjected to a light roasting. A poisonous brew is concocted by cynical five-year-olds, and knowing when to stop is of deadly importance in a game of murder in the dark. So, let's go through and check out some of my tabs. As I say, a lot of these are pretty short stories anyway, but um, I wanted to read this. So this is from Making Poison, and uh, this re I relate to this because when I was a kid, I made some poison as well. When I was five, my brother and I made poison. We were living in a city then, but we probably would have made the poison anyway. We kept it in a paint can under somebody else's house and we put all the poisonous things into it that we could think of. Toadstools, dead mice, mountain ash berries, which may not have been poisonous but looked it. Piss, which we saved up in order to add it to the paint can. By the time the can was full, everything in it was very poisonous. The problem was that once having made the poison, we couldn't just leave it there. We had to do something with it. We didn't want to put it into anyone's food, but we wanted an object, a completion. There was no one we hated enough. That was the difficulty. And you'll have to read the rest of the story to find out what object they came out with, came up with. Okay, fainting. Um, and yeah, I just thought this was really beautifully written. You're upright, standing on two feet in the usual way, and then suddenly you have a different point of view. The roots of the trees instead of the leafy tops. Close up of the floorboards, with nothing in between but a narrowing down and a rushing sound, which is like wings, but not the wings of angels. The first time, I was nine, in a crowd of winter coats in a Victorian building, steam heated, looking at a display of chicken embryos, one day, five days, each one stopped short and bottled. There were twins too, human ones, identical and fraternal, their arteries and veins injected with coloured rubber, the purple sea fan placenta, greyish now, in with them. After that, I was looking up at a forest of canvas overshoes and legs. I could not remember folding or the moment when my head hit the wooden floor. So I like this, this is from the title story, Murder in the Dark, I just want to read this paragraph. I heard that this game was once played at a summer cottage by six normal people and a poet, and the poet really tried to kill someone. He was hindered only by the intervention of a dog, which could not tell fantasy from reality. The thing about this game is that you have to know when to stop. And so this is women's novels, um, which is basically a bulleted list, and I just want to read item number one. Men's novels are about men. Women's novels are about men too, but from a different point of view. You can have a men's novel with no women in it, except possibly the landlady or the horse, but you can't have a women's novel with no men in it. Sometimes men put women in men's novels, but they leave out some of the parts. The heads, for instance, or the hands. Women's novels leave out parts of the men as well. Sometimes it's the stretch between the belly button and the knees. Sometimes it's the sense of humour. It's hard to have a sense of humour in a cloak, in a high wind, on a moor. My cat is here to say hello as well, aren't you, Biggie? Here to say hello. So this begins, it's time to like men again. Where shall we begin? I have a personal preference for the backs of necks because of the word nape so lightly furred, which is different from the word scruff. But for most of us, especially the beginners, it's best to start with the feet and work up. To begin with the head and all it contains would be too suddenly painful. Then there's the navel, birth dimple, where we fell from the stem, something we have in common. You could look at it and say, he also is mortal. But it may be too close for comfort to those belts and zippers which cause you such distress, and comfort is what you want. He's a carnivore, you're a vegetarian. That's what you have to get over. I am not a carnivore, I am also a vegetarian. She says all rapists are men, which I had an argument, well not an argument, a debate with my friend over whether that's true. It apparently depends upon your um, definition of rape. But even then, um, she was using the legal definition. And despite the legal de definition of rape, only including penetration with a penis, there are still women who've been found guilty of um, rape. So, you know. All right, him. Every time when you open the door to him, it's much the same. As if he's just come from another planet, he stands there semi-blinded by the sudden light, as if he were shedding it from within. As if he is his own dark, hurtling, gravity-free interior, and he's just landed, and you are the land. He knows he has to make his alien greeting, and you know it too. It will be courteous, and awkward because of his difficulties with the language. I come in peace, you want to prompt him, but don't. He's anxious enough already. It's the way he inclines his head, looking instead at the floor. Having looked at you first with eyes so unprotected and candid, you couldn't look back. Like many other sad men, he wants only to be allowed to be taken in. You're tired of the sadness of men. It's been used on you too often. Sadness like a clumsy plumber's wrench, a tool for bludgeoning water. But I don't know, see, again, that to me is like, again, this societal thing of men aren't allowed to be sad. You're not allowed to be sad. You just have to bottle it up and then shoot yourself in the head, you know? Um, but maybe that's just me being facetious. Who knows? 
Okay, and then finally some instructions for the third eye here. The eye is the organ of vision, and the third eye is no exception to that. Open it and it sees, close it and it doesn't. Most people have a third eye, but they don't trust it. That wasn't really F standing on the corner, hands in his overcoat pockets, waiting for the light to change. F died two months ago. It's a trick my eyes played on me, they say, a trick of the light. I've got nothing against telepathy, said Jane, but the telephone is so much more dependable. And then I just really like this as well. What's the difference between vision and a vision? The former relates to something it's assumed you've seen, the latter to something it's assumed you haven't. Language is not always dependable either. So yeah, Murder in the Dark by Margaret Atwood. Um, as you can see, I didn't agree with kind of everything she said in this, but I, for the most part, I just thought it was an interesting read. Um, it was really beautifully written as well, and actually I think it would be a pretty good place to start if you're new to Atwood and you don't know what book to pick up to begin with. I gave Murder in the Dark by Margaret Atwood a four out of five. So there we have it, that's what I made of Murder in the Dark by Margaret Atwood. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.